Welcome to Rob Schmidt Tonight. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle, in for Rob this evening. And at this hour, we are suffering under an unprecedented display of American weakness on the world stage. From Joe Biden and his failing far-left enablers inside the West Wing, currently there are more than a dozen Americans being held hostage right now by a terrorist organization. And the President of the United States seems to have no real urgency, no real energy, and no real solutions when it comes to bringing them home. Biden's arrival in Israel was meant to be a display of strength and solidarity with one of our closest allies at a time when we could potentially be on the brink of a third world war. But what was the outcome? $100 million in aid money that we know will most likely be confiscated by the terrorists holding our people. Today, I'm also announcing $100 million in new U.S. funding for humanitarian assistance in both Gaza and the West Bank. Let me be clear, if Hamas diverts or steals the assistance, they will have demonstrated once again that they have no concern for the welfare of the Palestinian people. Let's be clear here. He is talking about a group that proudly digs up water pipes so they can fashion them into rockets that will be fired indiscriminately into Israel with the hopes of killing as many innocent Jews as possible. The Biden administration needs to face reality, face the facts, and stop emboldening this evil. But instead, Sleepy Joe barely mentioned the hostages. And after a mere few hours on the ground, he classified the trip as a win. Were you disappointed that you had to cancel the stop in Jordan? No. <laughs> disappointed. Look, I came to get something done. I got it done. Not many people thought we could get this done. And not many people want to be associated with failure. A, a monthly, monthly, an hour or more discussion about whether to go. Because had we gone and this failed, then you know, the United States failed, Biden's presidency failed, et cetera, which would be a legitimate criticism. Well, the only thing he got done was convincing the Egyptians to help us deliver the $100 million reward to our enemies. And by the way, Joe Biden didn't cancel the summit. The King of Jordan canceled the summit, which was supposed to include the president of Egypt and the Palestinian president. Biden could not have gone to Jordan without utterly embarrassing himself and our country, even more than he has already done. And ask yourself this, why was there limited talk about our hostages currently being held in the Gaza Strip? It's because Biden had nothing to report and would rather dodge and deflect then put Americans first and actually get something done. Instead, he left all talk of hostage recovery to his mouthpieces making the rounds on the morning shows earlier today. What's the latest on the hostages? Is Qatar making any progress in getting some of them out? So we're obviously engaged in, in intensive uh, diplomatic uh, activity related to the hostages, but also uh, have sent a number of experts to the region to consult uh, with Israelis uh, who are involved in hostage uh, extraction. I, I don't want to get ahead of any of those conversations. These are obviously the most sensitive things that we are working on. And the president has said it is a top priority uh, for us to get as many uh, of those hostages out as soon as possible. Let's just say my confidence in Joe Biden and my confidence this inept and incompetent cabal of Washington swamp creatures is at an all-time low. And it somehow keeps going from bad to worse. Just look at your screen. The Biden White House media team shared this picture to their Instagram account last night without blacking out the faces of our Delta Force military team. And after being excoriated, across social media. They deleted it an hour later after thousands, including our enemies, were able to see their faces. This White House is so unserious, it defies all logic. You cannot project strength with Joe Biden in charge. Look at John Kirby and Anthony Blinken. See the nervous looks on their faces as Biden takes questions from the press. With Joe Biden spewing one incoherent word salad after another, his team is literally terrified that he is going to say the wrong thing in the most crucial moments. And of course, they have every reason to be nervous. 
the decaying and declining cognitive wreck in the Oval Office should be in a retirement home, rather than stumbling, bumbling, and crumbling amid an intensifying Middle Eastern hot war. And remember, our enemies, like Iran, are watching closer than ever. And as they decide if this is their moment to ramp up their aggression, this is what they see. You know, uh, years ago, I asked the Secretary of State, when he and I worked with the Senate, to write something to one man that said uh, the one line that uh, I think is appropriate. He said, uh, it's not, we need uh, not just uh, we saw it in Afghanistan with the disastrous withdrawal that led to the death of 13 heroic U.S. service members. We saw it in Ukraine when Putin was undeterred by Biden's empty rhetoric. And now we're seeing it in the Middle East, where Biden's feckless attempts at diplomacy are only raising the prospects of real war and undermining global confidence in the might of America. Our enemies know that under this administration, they have free reign to do whatever they want, and the only consequences they will face are giant aid packages and unfrozen bank accounts. We know what works when it comes to peace in the Middle East. Just look at the success of President Trump. He unleashed American energy independence, driving down oil prices and bankrupting Iran. He made clear to these rogue nations that unwanted aggression would be met with swift and severe consequences. And they knew he was serious because he was not afraid to take out top targets. He then isolated the bad actors from other countries in the region, establishing economic ties between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan. For so many years, these countries operated under the assumption that carrying out terrorism would only be met with American bribes to stop. But President Trump showed there is a real way to revitalize economies and relations in a way that also reduces global terrorism. When you look at the state of the 2024 race, with Trump so far ahead, it is no wonder that our worst enemies are working as fast as they can to take all they can get now.